How to modify the clipping diodes in your Boss DS1. Let's swap out the stock clipping diodes on a DS1 to change the tone and character of the distortion. If you have an old one kicking around that you're no longer using, this is a great way to learn how to start building and modifying pedals. Tools and supplies used in this video. You'll need a Boss DS1 made prior to 2016. This is important. To verify it was made prior to 2016, unscrew the back and take a look inside. If the PCB takes up the entire inside like this, it is through hole and ready to mod. If the internals are very small, they're surface mount parts and look like this. This is a newer one and will not be covered in this video. Let's get back to the tools. A soldering iron, solder, side cutters or wire clippers, tweezers or pliers, a Phillips head screwdriver, desoldering tools. We'll demonstrate using desoldering wick, desoldering needles, and a desoldering pump. You don't need all three, but we'll demonstrate them all anyways. A little bit of masking tape, a component socket so you can change out your diodes again without soldering, and lastly, diodes. We've got a few options here, including 1N4148, which is similar to the stock diodes, 3mm LEDs, which stands for light emitting diode, and a pair of germanium diodes. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is open your pedal by taking the four screws off the back lid. Gently pull the circuit board away from the enclosure. Locate your diodes. On these older Boss DS1s, they are located here and are labeled D4 and D5. If you want to do a super easy mod that requires no soldering, take your side cutters and clip out these diodes. You can clip them out entirely or just one side, it doesn't matter. This mod will reduce distortion and drastically increase volume. You'll hear that in a clip later in this video. If that's all you want to do, put your pedal back together and you are done. If you want to properly remove the diodes and prep for replacement, we'll need to desolder them. Find the corresponding solder pads on the other side of the board for these diodes. They are circled here. The first thing I'd like to do is add a little bit of fresh solder. This will help the joints retain heat better and fresh solder will flow a little easier. Heat up the joint, add a little solder, remove the solder, then remove the iron. Do this for the remaining three solder pads for the diodes. Time to desolder. This is the most challenging part. Using your tweezers, grab hold of a diode leg. It's hard to find a good spot to grip, and you might need to wedge the tweezers slightly under the leg. Find the corresponding pad on the other side, heat it up, and gently pull the leg out of the pad using the rest of your hand against the PCB for leverage. Once it's out, remove the iron. Easy, and it gets easier after the first leg is out. This should take about five to six seconds per pad. Don't spend too much longer or you'll risk damaging the pads and traces. Do the same with the other solder joints. Grab the leg, heat it up, and pull out the legs until the diodes are no longer in the pedal. Now we will clean up the holes. I'll show you three ways to do this. First way will be with a desoldering pump. You'll need to move quickly here. Make sure the pump is loaded, heat up the solder, cover it up with the tip of the pump, and then release the spring. It will suck the solder out. If you're having trouble clearing the hole, refill the pad with fresh solder and try it again. The next method to clear the holes is with wick. Desoldering wick is coated with flux and will attract solder. Lay the wick over the pad and heat the wick above the pad. You'll see the wick start to pull the solder away. Sometimes it helps to drag the wick a bit while heating. The last method is with desoldering needles. Solder doesn't stick to stainless steel, making these super effective at making a clear hole, but they don't help in removing any of the old solder. That's not a super big deal, but if you want to do it properly, I recommend removing the bulk of the solder with wick or a pump before using needles. Grab a small size needle, orient it in the pad, heat it up, and push it through. Rotating the needle helps a bit. Look how clean the hole is. Take your component socket, and snap it so you have two strips that are four component spaces long. Now, snip off as much of the leg as you can for the two middle positions of each strip of the sockets, like this. Insert a socket into the holes the diodes used to be. Try to keep it flush and straight if you can. Use a piece of masking tape to hold it in place. Clean the tip of your iron, add some fresh solder to the tip, and wedge the iron between the socket leg and the PCB pad. Wait a second. Add a little solder until it flows, remove the solder, then remove the iron. Do the same with the other unsoldered leg. Remove the tape and check your work. If it's soldered in nicely, move on to the next socket. 
Insert the second socket into the board, tape it down, and solder it in on both ends. You are done soldering. Notice how the diode label has a little arrow in line? This line indicates the cathode side of the diodes. Take your new diodes and identify the cathode. When inserting the new diodes in the socket, they need to be facing in opposite directions. It doesn't matter which way they are installed into the socket as long as both diodes have the cathode facing in opposite directions. Most diodes will have a line on one side to indicate the cathode. If using LEDs, the cathode side of the LED has a flattened spot on the rim of the LED. Cut the leg shorter and shape the legs so the spacing matches the outer holes of the sockets. Be careful shaping the germanium diodes. If you bend the legs too close to the glass, it will shatter. I like to shape them like this. Feel free to plug in your pedal and test it. If you want, you don't even need to install any diodes. Try out different diode pairs, or feel free to mix and match if you want. Nothing says you need to install two of the same diodes on both sides. Asymmetrical clipping can sound very nice. If you are swapping diodes, it's a good idea to make sure power is not plugged into your pedal while doing this until the diodes are inserted into the socket. Here's a quick comparison of no diodes, stock 1N4148 diodes, LEDs, and germanium. We left the controls at Newton compensated for volume and post for a fair comparison. Once you've found the diodes you like, gently pack the PCB back into the enclosure and screw the lid on. And that's it, you're done. Hopefully you learned something new and had some fun along the way. Like, subscribe, and visit our website. Happy modding!